Beloved actress and yoga instructor Trisha McCauley is missing. D.C. police get a call of an assault at a nearby drugstore where an eyewitness claims a man left this scene driving Trisha's car. Police release a snapshot from the store's surveillance cameras, hoping it will lead them to the suspect and to Trisha herself. And just minutes after cops release this photo, Jonathan, with his dog Daisy in tow, spots the wanted man. The guy sitting there in the car on the other side of the street. The guy you saw on Facebook. The yeah. picture of the person of interest. So we're approaching from the front. You and Daisy. Yes. So we're on the other sidewalk. I noticed the guy because he's got the music turned all the way up. He's bouncing around in the car. He's smoking something. In many ways, calling attention to himself. And seemingly looking for a confrontation. And he just, you know, just stares at me really intently. And I stare back because I instantly think that this is the guy. Jonathan has no idea what he's walking into. So you didn't see Trisha anywhere around the vehicle? No, there was, there was no sign of her whatsoever. You just saw him in the driver's seat. Right. And right now, Jonathan plans to act his way through this terrifying situation. Trying to like, can I get my phone up so I can call 911? Can I get my camera up? If he does have a weapon or if he attacks me in any way, can I get away? Placing Jonathan just steps away from a potentially dangerous criminal. He leans out the window and goes, hello, sir, how are you? And I just, I mean, I really sort of, I, I froze up, but I didn't freeze, you know, because I, I just realized instantaneously something's going down and it's not good. <laughs> and I have to do something. I have to do something effective. And so uh, we step up on the sidewalk. I've got my phone. I'm like, well, I'm fine, sir. How are you? What does he do at that point? He whips out onto P Street, does a U, and goes south on 21st. So he drives off. In seconds, Jonathan is on the phone to police. They were dispatching units as we spoke. DC police officers swarmed the suspect found inside another convenience store just a few streets away. He's arrested on simple assault charges from the earlier altercation that same day. And when cops pat him down, they find Trisha's credit cards and car keys. Then police search Trisha's car parked just outside. It's heartbreaking. Trisha's lifeless body is found wedged between the front and back seats. When you heard Trisha's body was in the back of that car, and you were right there. <laughs> I was floored. I was horrified. News of the tragic discovery reaches Trisha's brother, Brian, who takes to Facebook and writes this solemn post. Trisha is gone. They have found her body. Thank you for all your work, support, and love. To all her DC family, I know she truly thought of you that way. Thank you for being there for her all these years. Hang on to each other. The coroner rules Trisha's death a homicide. The autopsy report states the cause of death as asphyxia to ligature strangulation with blunt force trauma. It was an absolutely horrible act that happened to her, and it is, it is one of the most egregious things that could happen to anybody, especially um, on Christmas. The suspect is identified as 29-year-old Adrian Johnson. He tells police he met Trisha for the first time on Christmas Day. Adrian claims Trisha offered him a ride and sex. And after that, I pulled court documents containing the suspect's comments to police just after his arrest. He told police that he and Trisha McCauley had sex and that she was suicidal and hung herself in her vehicle. He also said, quote, if someone is suicidal and gives you all their stuff, is that illegal? The actual facts of the altercation between Trisha and this suspect are, are still up for investigation. We're still trying to figure out and piece it all together. But police have enough to charge Adrian Johnson with the first degree murder of Trisha McCauley. And this is not Adrian Johnson's first brush with the law. The suspect's rap sheet shows six arrests in the past year. We're talking about robberies, force and violence. We're talking about assaults. And these violent crimes, they tend to just build on, upon each other. 
and some residents of D.C. say Trisha's murder was completely preventable. According to police, on December 21st, just four days before Christmas and Trisha's murder, the suspect, Adrian Johnson, was supposed to make a court appearance to show that he had complied with a previous court order to get an ankle monitor put on. He never showed up to get it. And a warrant was never issued. And as a result of the current system in place, nothing that has to do with the police officers or anybody or M MPD, but with the current system in place, uh, they just let that fall through the cracks and they're like, oh, we'll just handle it in January. And that's, that's absolutely disgusting. Because of this alleged gap in the system, new legislation has been passed since Trisha's murder concerning the GPS ankle monitoring program. But according to people who knew and loved Trisha, it's a little too late and still more needs to be done. I just hope that some good can come out of it because there are things that have to change. You know, when situations like this happen, it just should not have happened this way.